Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we are talking about updates to Tesla's solar program, some news on Gigafactory Nevada and Model Y, price target increases on Tesla stock, and a new firmware update. Tesla stock on the day today finished down 2.9% to $1,500.64, that compared to the NASDAQ down 0.7%. All right, first up today we have news on Tesla Solar. Tesla has again updated the pricing on their retrofit solar panel, so not the solar roof here. At least as far as I can tell, pricing on the solar roof is a lot more variable, but on the panels, Tesla has lowered the price on some versions of their solar panels and increased on the others seemingly to offset that lower price. Back in mid-June, Tesla had previously cut the prices of their solar offering on the panels by about 20 to 25%. That led to an after 24% federal tax credit incentive Price range from $1.81 per watt on the small size systems to $1.36 per watt on the largest systems. Tesla has now updated that pricing so that it is fixed. There is no more cheaper price for larger systems. After incentives, all systems now cost $1.49 per watt or $2.01 per watt before incentives. But on the smallest size systems, the 4.08 kilowatt systems, that is an 18% cheaper price. That means these smaller systems are now 30 to 40% cheaper than they were just a couple months back. With the new flat rate pricing, that means Tesla has raised the prices on 8, 12, and 16 kilowatt systems by 3%, 5%, and 9% respectively. Tesla has now also moved their solar offerings to the top of their website on their homepage. They now have solar panels up top saying solar for existing roofs, and then solar roof right below that saying solar for new roofs, which I think is a good way of differentiating the solar products to the unacquainted. But it is interesting and exciting to see the emphasis put on solar. It was actually up there for a little bit like this earlier, but then they swapped it back out to the Model S like normal. Now we have seen it flip back again. Tesla also emphasizes that they have the lowest cost in America and a money back guarantee. And I think they added some new visuals to the solar panel info page, but I also may have just missed those earlier. In terms of the cost, energysage.com has compiled solar estimates from a number of different solar companies. And coincidentally, they just updated this information yesterday, July 15th. Per watt pricing in the data that they have compiled ranges from $1.64 after incentives to $2.22 per watt, putting Tesla's prices about 10 to 30% lower than these competitors. These prices are now starting to seem pretty compelling after incentives, a 4 kilowatt system only costs about $6,100. Obviously there are a lot of variables impacting how much energy can be produced by a solar system, but solarestimate.org estimates that on average, a 4 kilowatt system can produce between 11 and 19 kilowatt hours per day. So let's say 15 kilowatt hours per day on average. The US Energy Information Administration estimates that the average cost per kilowatt hour for residential electricity use is 13 cents per kilowatt hour, meaning that if you were to use that 15 kilowatt hours that was generated each day, you would be saving about $60 per month. That would put your payback period on a small size solar system from Tesla at about $6,100 after federal incentives at about eight and a half years. But of course, the panels are going to continue to produce energy beyond that point in time. Tesla's warranty on the system is 25 years. So either you're adding that value to your home when you sell it, or you're capturing that $60 a month, roughly, for another 16 and a half years at least. That's more than $11,000 in additional savings after breaking even, which works out to about a 4.4% compound annual return on that six grand that you spent purchasing solar. Of course, this is assuming averages across the board and that energy prices stay fixed for those 25 years. Always a lot of variables on solar, but I thought helpful to go through that example. Next up today, we're gonna to stick with the math for a little bit longer. We have a video that was published by the Science Channel for their Super Factories program. And in what I believe is the inaugural episode, they covered Tesla's Gigafactory in Nevada for about 10 minutes. Not too much new for those of us that have followed Tesla for a long time, but one thing that was notable was a statement that they made in the middle of the video. They said, quote, This super factory produces 13 million individual battery cells per day, and that number is growing, end quote. So here's where the math comes back in. The long-range packs for the Model 3 and the Model Y have 4,416 cells per pack, meaning that if we set aside Tesla energy production for a second, they would be capable of producing 2,944 long-range packs per day. That's 1,075,000 per year. In terms of watt hours annually, that would be about 82 gigawatt hours. Doing the math on that, I think it's pretty unlikely that Tesla is at that production rate at Gigafactory Nevada already, especially because the last reporting that we had heard on the topic was that Panasonic and Tesla were working to expand the capacity from around 35 gigawatt hours per year to 54 gigawatt hours per year. 
Even with the Model Y ramping up and with the Tesla Semi now on the horizon, as well as Tesla's new Megapack for Tesla Energy, I just don't think Tesla is ready for that type of capacity yet. And remember, that would be long range packs. Even if we set aside five gigawatt hours for Tesla Energy from that number, 13 million sales per day would still be about a million long range packs. So I think the most likely scenario here is that the Science Channel either misspoke or referred to a targeted production rate in the future or something like that. All right, next up, we will stick with production. There have been reports the last couple of days circulating that there's some upcoming downtime at Tesla's Fremont factory as Tesla prepares to accelerate the production from Model Y by introducing the next general assembly line, GA 4.5. On this topic, Electrek yesterday said, quote, now Electrek has learned that some workers were told that factory shutdown is expected by the end of the month in order to perform upgrades. Tesla will likely use the downtime to prepare the production start of a new general assembly line that Tesla has referred to as GA 4.5 in building permit applications, end quote. I don't have a whole lot to add to this other than to say that I probably should have been looking at Model 3 and Model Y production as being a little bit more combined when I went through my forecast for Q2. I did make that assumption a little bit, but I think probably not quite enough. But hopefully as we continue to hear more and more about GA 4.5, that'll allow for us to forecast a little bit more separately for them, though Tesla is likely to continue to only break it down Model 3 slash Y and Model S slash X. So something to keep in mind as we think about Q3 forecasts, and in terms of downtime, we'll just have to keep an eye on that, but I doubt the entire factory would be down. For example, they may not need to shut down all Model 3 production or production for S and X. Sticking with the Model Y, I do want to circle back on a topic from earlier this week, the $3,000 price drops on the Y. We talked at the time about how that would catch a lot of media attention, a lot of free marketing for Tesla on the Model Y, helping them not only right now with Model Y, but also to lock in future orders from people maybe considering a vehicle purchase in the future. Well, enough time has passed now that we can start to see the Google search interest trends for Model Y from that price drop. If we look at the search interest over the past 90 days for the Model Y in the United States, we can see that on July 12th, when the price drop was announced, the search interest went up to an index of 100 versus the average over that 90 days of 25. So about four times the amount of interest, and that actually pushed search volume for Model Y temporarily above Model 3. Of course, over time, we do expect the Model Y to overtake the Model 3, and interest has been steadily building, but it's all been by word of mouth, and that's going to take some time. We can kind of see this when we look at worldwide search interest rather than United States over the last 90 days. The Model Y on the worldwide search didn't actually pass Model 3. In the US, the Model Y has indexed at about half the rate as the Model 3 versus worldwide at roughly about a third. That makes sense because you can't really get a Model Y outside of North America. Last thing on the search interest, if we go back and extend the time horizon far enough to include the Model Y reveal, which is when search interest peaked for the Model Y, we can see that these price drops drove the most significant interest in the Model Y since that unveiling at about one third of the level that the unveiling received interest-wise. I would bet that this price drop plus the continued ramp of the Model Y will help us see sustained interest higher than the previous levels going forward. Next up today, we have two price target increases on Tesla stock to discuss, one from Credit Suisse and one from Citibank. Credit Suisse's is the most significant. Analyst Dan Levy has raised his price target on Tesla stock from $700 per share to $1,400 per share, but has still kept a neutral rating on the stock. There was a Seeking Alpha article covering the note, and from that we get a quote saying, quote, We see multiple factors responsible for the recent sharp run-up in Tesla stock, including a run of rich data points slash catalysts, heightened retail interest amid EV euphoria, parentheses Tesla the most widely bought stock in the past month on Robinhood, covering by short sellers, and buying by quant slash momentum investors. With the stock priced for perfection, we believe any material near-term negative data point could lead to a drawdown, end quote. The Robinhood point is definitely a good one. I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago, but the number of users holding Tesla shares in a Robinhood brokerage account has increased from about 120,000 users at the start of the year to now just around 485,000. Just since June 1st, that number of users has more than doubled. It was at 235,000 on June 1st. As with all data though, I think it's important to get context. And if we look at another stock that maybe would be less momentum than Tesla, Walmart for example. Things aren't all that different, they are still different, but Walmart had about 67,000 holders as of June 1st, and right now sits at just below 100,000, so about 50% growth, versus again the number of users holding Tesla somewhere maybe around 110% or so. So not as crazy as it may first seem for Tesla, definitely outsized growth, but we still have to keep in mind that Robinhood itself is probably adding new users pretty quickly. 
and I think probably more people just adding all stocks as the markets have continued to recover and rise. Anyway, back to the note from Credit Suisse, Dan Levy says that to believe that the stock is fairly valued now, you would have to forecast 2.2 million units for 2025 and assign a 30 times price to earnings ratio on the stock at that time. Sounds good to me. I mean, over the last three years since 2017, Tesla has added basically 700,000 in production capacity, going from about 100,000 in 2017 to where they should end the year this year at around 800,000. So to achieve that 2.2 million forecast doesn't really require much more than linear progression from what Tesla has done the last few years. Personally, I'm going to go ahead and assume that Tesla has learned some things in that period of time that will let them grow faster. Citibank, not too much to mention here. There's not really that much information about the note available online, but they increased their price target from $246 per share. Pause, moment of silence for that share price target to $450 per share now. Lastly, today we do have a new firmware update that is rolling out to Tesla vehicles. According to teslafy.com, it's at about 7% of the fleet right now, of the fleet that they track at least. And this is firmware version 2020.28.2. Teslascope.com has done a great job collecting these release notes. So here are the updates. We have Sirius XM improvements for the Model S and Model X. Looks like quite a few user interface changes, which is, I think, encouraging given Elon's reference to improving the podcasting user interface in a previous tweet. Tesla has now also increased the variance to speed limit threshold when using traffic light and stop sign control. I believe before that feature would limit it to exactly the speed limit, it's now increased to plus five miles an hour over the speed limit. There are some suspension improvements to SNX, and then probably the most interesting one here is an update to the passenger face vent for the Model Y. So on the right-hand side of the vehicle, well, at least until right-hand drive starts shipping, but Tesla says, quote, your car will automatically disable the passenger face vents when no passenger is detected, lowering energy consumption in hot weather. This vent can be manually enabled by tapping where you'd like the passenger face vent to direct air within the climate control panel, end quote. There seem to be some hardware variances there for the vent between the Model Y and the Model 3, which allows this flexibility for the Model Y. But just another example here of how thoroughly Tesla has looked at the HVAC control for the Model Y, obviously with the main difference there being the heat pump system. A nice little update there that should hopefully improve efficiency and make things a little bit more comfortable for those people that have sort of different internal body temperatures and maybe don't want the same airflow on them. Hopefully Tesla does make this customizable and controllable on the touchscreen rather than simply tying it to the weight in the seat. All right, I think that wraps it up for today then. As always, huge thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and sign up for notifications. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast, and I'll see you tomorrow for the Friday, July 17th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.